everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our long-running series, The Unported Playlist, where I take a look at some of my favorite unported arcade games of all time. And today we actually have an Atari prototype, Danger Express, that was supposed to be released in 1992. And there is a big snake in it, so you know you can't go wrong. Before we get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor. Go down below, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But because this is a prototype, there is some jank involved in it. But it is so much fun to talk about. Not only is it an interesting game, but it is a great piece of preservation because arcade games that don't release, sometimes the ROMs never get dumped. But this one is available to play in MAME and you can go play it after the video if you so wanted. Right off the top, you can see that it's got a sprite scaling look to it. Not anywhere near as good as what Sega could do moving around sprites and scaling them, but it's pretty decent. I love this CD alley here. We've got the sign for liquor and a sign for a strip club. Club. I guess that's seedy enough. I mean, not everyone who drinks liquor is seedy, but I guess if you go to a strip club, who knows, whatever. But you'll see here, there is a female main character, and that's just not a dude from the 80s with feathered fair fossa hair. It's actually a woman, and that took me a little bit to figure out, because when you get hit, the sound effect is female, but that photo made me think it was just an 80s dude. But the way this game progressive, it's just a ton of fun. You have shooting stages, you have hand-to-hand -hand combat stages, and you have stages where you're allowed to do both. And now we're on top of a train here, and we have a pair of nunchucks that have electrical bolts coming out of them. Seriously, don't try to find logic in this game because there is none. And what story is here is completely temp and told, which is basically with text over the screen. I would say this game feels maybe like 80% finished. It You can play it from start to finish and get the entire story and enjoy it. The hitboxes and kind of striking abilities of your character feel a little bit off, like they could have improved that, and I'm sure they would have. But for what is here, it's an entertaining game. It's a weird one and it's cheesy as all hell, but you kind of have to have a little bit of cheese in arcade games, especially because, you know, in the early 90s, everything was poorly written and kind of cheesy, even if it was made in America. But moving in to the train car here, now we have another shooting section and it puts us on a timer. We need to kill all our opponents, get to the end of that train car before that bomb blows up or we're going to be in a lot of trouble. And I do love that these characters here are throwing these crates at us, but half the time they're just standing in the air without anything in their hands, almost like they're doing the Michael Jackson thriller dance. That's the fun part about prototypes. You're not quite sure what is just badly designed. You're not quite sure what is just not finished. I'm assuming that this isn't a finished section of the game and that's why they are not holding those boxes above their head. But it's really actually a decent game. I've played arcade games that were released that aren't as fun as this. And it definitely has that really crappy 80s Rambo knockoff, you know, sort of movie vibe. Like, this could be a movie with Steven Seagal and I would 100% believe in it and really think it is pretty hilarious. But weirdly, we're on a train and now we're going to go into a casino. But the casino is also on the train because the next level takes place on the train again. At least that's what I think is going on in the story. But you get this really garish colorway. You've got these neon flamingo pinks. You've got these oranges turning into reds. And I love that the croupier there and all the patrons of the casino are just sitting around watching this fight happen. And they don't seem to care whatsoever. It's definitely ugly, but it is ugly in the most fun way possible. And now you have these blonde-headed, leather-suit-wearing ninja female assassins. This game has no rhyme or reason as to what's going on, and that's why I think it's really fun. Not just from a preservation standpoint, from a what-in-the-hell-were-they-thinking standpoint. The game doesn't have a full soundtrack, but what it does have is hilarious, and I think this might be Brett the Hitman Heart. So go ahead and listen for like 40 seconds, and I'll come back and talk more about this prototype. Enjoy! Yeah, that's some weird music, and this is a very weird cutscene, and I'm not sure where that dude is pulling that mace from. It just kind of appears, so I'm assuming he was probably holding it. And if you don't know what that means, you probably should go look it up, and don't blame me when you find the answer out. But we're back on the train. Was that entire casino in a train car? And if so, how did the rules of physics, time and space cease to exist in a casino car that big end up being on a train this narrow? And I guess, you know, prototype plus janky game, we really shouldn't think about it too much. But those are the type of things, one I think about if I'm playing a prototype game, is how does this fit 
in. And at this point in time in the game, it starts feeling slightly repetitive, although we do get to a meat car in the train, and I'm not sure if this is how they move meat, but it is pretty hilarious, because we have to shoot these sides of beef, I think, and these ninja assassins are now throwing pigs at us. There's definitely a lot of creativity in this game. When you use that flamethrower, they burn up, and you can see the skeletons inside of them. You can tell the designers really loved the concept of this game. Maybe the hardware just wasn't up to spec, or maybe it wasn't testing well, because there are photos of this cabinet being on location test. There's no real reason written as to why it was cancelled, but probably just because they knew that it probably wasn't going to be a hit. Even playing this, it would have been a fun curiosity for a couple quarters, but I can't imagine ever pumping enough money into this cabinet to want to see the ending, although the ending that does exist here is pretty damn hilarious. But I love prototypes. I release them when I find them, and I play them anytime I get a chance, and you'll see I'm sure that's not the story that we're going to get in the final version. But now that we're off the train, we're into this meat loading dock here, and that guy falls about two inches and screams like he just got thrown off a cliff. We've got these muscle dudes that look like they're at a pit fighter just throwing pigs at us. I love that pig carcasses are a weapon in this game, and I wish we could pick them up and throw them at our opponents. Maybe that was something that was planned to be in there, I don't know. And you'll see that there's a flashing sprite on the ground that's either nunchucks or a chainsaw. A lot of the weapons don't seem to be finished in this game. Some things that you pick up that show chainsaw icons just give you more nunchucks, so clearly that was something that was planned to be put in the game. And I will say that the difficulty balancing makes no sense, because we're going to come up onto a boss here, and she's going to be one of the easiest bosses in the game, even though we're getting towards the later stages of the game itself. But it is a construction worker in a tank top who's going to do some breakdancing moves to try to hit us and kill us. I don't get it. It makes no sense, but that's why I love this game so much in a weird way, because it doesn't make sense. It's like watching a really weird, you know, C-level movie late at night on Netflix or something around Halloween where it's just terribly done, but you love it because it has been done so terribly. And we're already on the last stage of the game. Beating this game takes about 13 minutes, and I will put the long play up on Saturday so you can see everything that's going on. But yeah, that's kind of Danger Express. It can't really review it because it is not finished, but I can't imagine if this game was finished it would get much better. It is fun. It's dumb fun, and sometimes if you want to play a dumb fun game for 13 minutes, that's all you really need. And it's not a knock of the developers. I could see where their concept was going. It kind of feels like Taito's Rambo 3 or something like that. It just probably wasn't clicking, and they probably location tested it. Feedback came back poor, and they just decided, as opposed to fixing a game, to just cancel completely. And no, you're not watching Robocop here. This is the end of the game with that dude who was handling a snake. There's not a lot going on here. He just attacks you. You basically pump quarters in and kind of damage sponge him until he finally gives up. But I love this game because it was preserved. If you've been watching my channel, you know I love preservation. Anytime something's found that people don't have, I want to dump it and share it because this is great. If someone hadn't done that, we would never be able to see this absolutely epic ending. But should you play this game? Well, if you got 13 minutes to burn off and you want to play something new and unique, I definitely recommend it to you. If there's other games on imported playlists you never played before, I'd probably start there before this one. But that's the end of the game. We get this really janky, clearly prototype end story where we get the Medal of Honor and some parades in our honor. If you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them down below. I'll be back with Unimported next week and it won't be a prototype. But yeah, Danger Express, it exists. You can play it and that's awesome. Bye-bye.